so we are going to be going over from genes to proteins, transcription and translation, which combined is the process of DNA synthesis. Now in my book, it is Holt Biology, Johnson and Raven. It is chapter 10, section 1. So before we start, I'm just going to say one thing. These aren't easy subjects to handle, but once you understand them, the vocabulary comes with them. And I've compiled, I've searched for some really good pictures. I've made some of them. They're bad, but these pictures are really simple, and they're going to help so much more than some of these really, really complex ones on the internet that are all crazy. So just hang in there. It should be a relatively short video. Just, you know, concentrate for a little bit, and it should come easy. Okay, the first step is transcription. Transcription comes before translation. Now what happens is we start out with DNA. And if you do not know what DNA is, go over DNA before you watch this video. So DNA, as we know, is a double helix. Now what happens is an enzyme, which is this light blue thing, is RNA polymerase. And what this does is it unwinds the double helix. Now each separate strand is RNA. So this right here, the unwinded strand is RNA. And RNA, instead of having thymine, it has uracil. And that's, that's a nucleotide, it's a nucleic base of DNA. So what happens is when DNA unwinds by RNA pol polymerase into RNA, mRNA is formed. And mRNA stands for messenger RNA. And what happens is that RNA polymerase, it grabs complementary nucleotides from the outside and it makes up a complementary strand of RNA based off of these nucleic bases. So based off of their thymine and those other bases. Okay, and so that is basically transcription. They form mRNA. And it some finer details are that it knows when to start and stop with certain signals. And that's what the RNA polymerase reads, is certain signals, and then its job is to attach complementary nucleotides to form a strand of mRNA. Okay, not bad. So then, before we go on to the next one, we are going to go over codons. Now, don't run away. That chart is very scary. When I found it on my homework the first night, I basically threw it against the wall and gave up, and I did not do the homework. <laughs> I paid for that one. It's really simple. Codon. Look at the strand of RNA. Okay? This is mRNA, my bad, mRNA, messenger RNA. These are its nucleic bases. Cytosine, adenine, guanine, cytonine, adenine, and then uracil. Because remember, in RNA, there is no thymine, there is uracil. So basically what happens? Codons, codons, which are sets of three bases. So you would separate these into three. So there would be a line right here. See that? Totally straight line. Okay. A set of three is a codon. So we have two codons here, right? Yes. And what they do is they code for amino acids. So each set of three goes with a specific amino acid. And the reason why this is, is important is because amino acids make proteins. And the whole point of DNA synthesis, we have to make protein to copy it. And that's why it's important to know what amino acids are in a protein. So basically, this is a set of three is a codon. And each set of three codes for a protein. And that is all the chart is telling you. Now, my book tries to be all obnoxious and explain how to identify which proteins, but they suck at it. So basically, what happens for this set of three, it's C, 
C-A-B. You look at the first letter. It is C. Okay, well it starts with a C. So you go here. And then the next letter is an A. C-A-G. So then you go to the second letter, which is over here. So then it's C, and then you follow this to the A. So we have all these C-A combinations. And the last letter is G. So we go down. Oh, here it is. And the amino acid that it pros for is going to be written right next to it. This one is GLN. I have no idea what that stands for. But you will most likely not have to know. You just have to know how to locate it. So then let's try it with this second one. So find the first letter. Find the second letter. And then find the last letter and the amino acid this codon pro this codon codes for. Okay, gave you all a chance for that. Pause it if you need to. So you're gonna go to the first letter, which is C, right here. And now the second letter is A. Okay, well you follow it along to A. So we have all these. Now the last letter is U. Well, okay, here it is. So the amino acid this codes for is represented by HIS. So we're just going to call that amino acid hit. <laughs> and that is the whole point of codons. That, that's what you do. And it's very simple, but people manage to explain it in very complex ways. So, we just went over transcription, correct? This is transcription. They made RNA. And now the next step is translation. Now don't get scared off. This one's going to be easy too. Now, mRNA. We just made a strand of mRNA. And now it leaves the nucleus in a nucleic core and goes into the cytoplasm where translation takes place. So trans transcription takes place in the nucleus, translation takes place in the cytoplasm. Now what happens is a ribosome, which is this giant purple thing, attaches itself to the mRNA. And what happens is that ribosome moves on the mRNA like a train on a track. So it's constantly moving. Now, see this thing? This awkward little thing? Yeah, that's tRNA. What happens is it has anticodons. So each set of, we just learned that each set of these three are codons. So what these have, what tRNA has is anticodons. And on the anticodons, an amino acid. Now, what happens is that these anticodons, this whole tRNA, finds its match with their complementary nucleotide. So here you'll find they pair with their nucleic bases, which is what this is showing right here. Now, what happens then is once they attach with their complementary nucleotide, is that they drop off their amino acid, which in this case is ARG, it stands for something else, I promise. It drops off its amino acid, and then the tRNA leaves. So what happens is a chain of amino acids starts growing, and that is what makes a protein, a chain of amino acids. So that is translation. And that's it. I mean, it's semi-complex, guys. It's not necessarily easy to learn. So once you understand that, it's really going to help with the vocabulary. So just pause, rewind, do all that fancy stuff. I hope this helped a little bit. It's, it's a complex stuff, so just really look over it. Really depend on the visual representation, because that is how you're going to understand the vocabulary and the processes. Thank you for watching. Good luck. Have a great day. Comment if you need any help. I'll try to respond. Still working out how to use YouTube. Okay, bye guys.